finish up and answer these questions correctly. Oh Say past or anything you can't answer. <laughs> now, I know that you were brought up by a lot of women. <clears throat> yeah. Were they funny? Yeah, they were, actually. Just yeah. funny in their own right? Funny in their own right, yeah. They weren't professional entertainers. No. <laughs> <laughs> You're not from a showbiz family? I'm not then. from a showbiz family. No, my mum my mom and my nan, very, very funny. Very good sense of humour and stuff. And also my godmother was... She was funny without realising it. You know what I mean? She was of, like a generation... Uh, where and I and I and I get a lot of my old women, my old woman character thing, just sort of based on things that she might have said. No, the, the actual character isn't really anyone I've known, but the way they talk and the way they are are is. And my mum, my mum is my mum is funny. And once I threw something at my mum and it hit her, and I walked away. And when I came back in the room, she was laying on the floor with ketchup on her face. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> but you didn't know it was ketchup, did no, you? No, I didn't know it was ketchup. No. Did you apologise? So I did a put, you know, and I sort of did that. But it, it jumped start. No, I think I went into a hysterical screaming mess. But I think she was forced to do that by having given birth to the omen. Yeah. <laughs> but you were. Were you aware that you could make people laugh when you were little? Could you? Um, could I, you make them laugh? Could I who? Your mum. Oh, your mom. <laughs> you meant me? Could you? <laughs> Not then. Not now. That's later. I thought, oh, OK. Um, <laughs> um, could I make them laugh? I don't think I did, really. I don't think I did, because I don't... I think it's only in recent times that my mum's thought... Because when I told my mum I was going to do stand-up, my mum said, why? <laughs> You know, did she? Yeah. She just thought it was unlikely I think she that you would. She just thought it was. Yeah, it was unlikely because I was very shy as a child. If you'd have said twenty years ago, who's the most likely to go on into a, a career in show business? It wouldn't have been me, because we used to have lots of big family parties, and it, and it would be this thing that the kids would have to entertain, like do a little play or. Do something because kids like to do that, and I used. To, I just remember thinking, God, I cannot wait until I get to the age where I'm no longer required <laughs> to do this. So it's quite ironic that I then went on to take. What did you do when you were required to do it? I I just don't think I did anything. I mean, no I think dancing. That, no dancing. No. I mean, with my mum, just my mum at home, I would do loads of stuff, and my mum would. I'd do um, my own opportunity knocks when I was at home, as I remember. <laughs> so you performed I inside perform your own living inside, room? Inside my own living room, but to an audience, I didn't want to do it, as I remember. But I did almost have a secret life as a kind of would-be entertainer, I think. And so when I got to school and I got to about 13, I sort of found a voice. And it was partly to stop people... Uh, it was controlling, basically, I think. I learnt to make people laugh in order to control how they could react to me. I think I realised that I could be funny round about the time when you're kind of becoming an adolescent, you're quite self-conscious, and I think I used the ability to make people laugh to control um, how they interacted with me because... When you are at that really self-conscious age, and I, I, I wasn't a particularly outgoing child or confident until I learned that I could make people laugh. And I thought, because I was at a girls' school, I was at a girls' conference school, and, I, and, and people get compartmentalised and you get labelled and stuff, and I thought, I don't want anyone to label me as anything other than the funny one. Because if they already say she's the funny one, they haven't then got to say she's the ginger one or she's the specky one you know what I mean she's the funny one and that's it and I just wanted f funny to define who I was that's quite a good kind of survival technique kicking in quite early yeah it was so you weren't being bullied but you were just heading that off at the past you were yeah I you think were predicting I, that you might be I think so I mean I there was a tiny bit of bullying I encountered and it and it might have been um it might have been a result uh me sign of getting that defence because because I kind of I remember coming to, into my own at about 13 and I remember being bullied about 12 but I was bullied at a time when I just didn't have the resources to do anything you know what I mean at that and all I did because I was a 
quite an uncomfortable child. I just used to go red. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then, then it just made people, you know. So, but it was, it was a, you know, it wasn't a big incident in my childhood or anything like that. I think it's just a rite of passage that kids go through sometimes. Yeah. And then, and then, you know, and then a year later, all the bullies want to be your friend. You know what I mean? Because, you know, that's how it goes. But, um, uh, yeah, I suppose it is a survival instinct, and it's one that I and I, I think I, I still use now. I would still rather. I just think if people think that I'm funny, they're not going to look any further. They're not going to delve any deeper. You know what I mean? They just go, I'm funny. Don't look. Don't look at me. <laughs> what I well, mean? look at me, look but at don't me look. with your eyes closed. Yeah. Look with your ears. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what I think. I think I and I, that definitely started when I was young. Did you find that it was? Good for attracting boys being funny? No. Did you? But then I never wanted to particularly attract boys. Okay. I, I didn't particularly want to attract girls, but no. I wasn't really um, confident enough to want really anyone's <laughs> attention, I don't think. And then I went to a boys' school. Oh, did you? Yeah. What, the sixth form or something? Yeah, well, 15, I think. I went to a boys' school where there was about six girls. And then... How did you manage that? <laughs> well, that was quite... Um, it was like for two years being Kylie Minogue. It was. <laughs> it really was. It was like being really famous for two, <laughs> two years. Because I remember... And I remember because I was a bit naive, really. I just come from a convent school... And they'd said, oh, we don't really think you should come back here. And then I went, I'm going to get my mum at this school. And then thought, oh, I just won't tell her, I'll just change schools. And went to a new school. I just walked in the first day in this new school. And this was for kids, 11 to 18-year-old, boys, 11 to 18-year-old. And they had a playground. And the playground had, like, sort of, like, high wire meshing. <laughs> and, and I just remember walking in. And then it's sort of like an exodus of boys running over to the side of the playground, literally sort of going... Let us at them. Let us at them. And I remember, because I'd, it was all at the last minute, I couldn't get a uniform until the next week or something at Peter Jones or something. Did you just go in a bikini? I just went in my spangled bikini. <laughs> and I just... I went in these... It was... Oh, they must have been... They must have been fashionable at the time, but they were in um, check trousers. And no, there was a good... Fashionable. Never fashionable. No. I'm getting mixed up, aren't I? <laughs> You went as a clown. I went as yeah. Rupert the Bear on my first day at school. <laughs> <laughs> and they still loved you. They, they were that it. desperate. And do you know what? There used to be a chorus of Rupert, Rupert the Bear. <laughs> I'm not joking. And I also had, for some reason, red paint and shoes on. <laughs> I was a clown. I so suppose. Dorothy meets Rupert. Dorothy meets Rupert. And... And that's when I began, I suppose, from about 15, 16, to quite like the attention. I suppose I did that thing of, oh, there's boys. It won't be funny. You're the funny one. Uh, <laughs> might, yes. might have done. I definitely did might that. But I definitely did that. But I did it in pubs when there was lots of drinking going on, probably a little bit older, maybe 17. And uh, I'd noticed that, you know, gags are happening. And I'm thinking, oh, yeah, I've got to get, oh, better not yeah. tell that because you're telling one... And you seem to be the main boy. Yeah. And uh, certainly and you I, will not look upon me with love if I usurp you, you yeah. by being funnier by being than you. Funnier than you. Yeah. That's um, bad, though, isn't it? Oh, it is bad. And I definitely remember being at my secondary school, like, when I was with, with, with all the girls, which I stayed till I was about 15 or 16. I definitely remember being funny and feeling funny and feeling like I would hold... You know, I could hold court a little bit. But in those years where I took my A-levels, I don't remember doing that at all. And I was surrounded by boys, which is quite interesting, and I've never thought of that yeah. until now. Did you have a kind of gang at the secondary school then? Yeah. yeah and were I you I did. the funny girl in the gang? Well, I think we were all quite funny, but um, I suppose if I look back, or if, if we all look back, I suppose... It comes as no surprise to my particular gang that I went on to do what I did. And then I started getting into drama when I was at secondary school, and I did like it and found it, and then I joined youth theatres and stuff like that. And then I sort of was a bit relieved that I kind of had found something that I was OK.